Getting ready to buff this thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a bath, get it clean, and we'll start buffing. I know this thing probably looks pretty good on camera, but I'm gonna show you a real close look at why we're gonna buff this thing. It's just really small imperfections, the paint drying, uh, things sitting on there while it's in the shop, it's got overspray on it, just all that little stuff. Let's take a look. So here on the roof, it's looking pretty good until you get real close. Let's see. I don't know if I can catch it at this angle. See that? There's a piece of trash. It's gonna be stuff like that all over the roof. It's also really hard to see. See, there's an area here. I don't know if you can see that or not. But that looks like uh, something splashed on it. Maybe bird droppings or something. But it's kind of ate into the clear just a little bit. So that kind of small stuff is what the buffing is gonna take care of. Shouldn't take a whole lot to sand it out and buff it back. And then it'll have a final layer of wax on there that's gonna help protect it down the road. This thing's been sitting inside the shop, so there's birds that get in here. So you're gonna have bird droppings and stuff that happen. So that's some of the small stuff that we're trying to get rid of. There's also texture. There's more texture than I want in some of the panels. The roof came out really good. It's pretty flat, but some of the other places on this thing, they're just not as flat as I want them. We're gonna buff it out and take care of all that. I'm gonna start on the top, work my way down. I just kind of do a rough taping and covering of uh, some of the holes like the cow panel and stuff that I don't want all that trash to go in, all the buffing compound and all that stuff. So we'll do like a section at a time. We'll do the roof first, get that out of the way. The roof is actually pretty flat, so I'm probably going to use a DA to sand that just to knock the top off and, and cut it down quick and get it polished back out. Some of the other panels that have the rougher texture that I want to get rid of, I'll have to use a block to get that flat. So I'll probably do that by hand, probably wet sand that. So let's get going. <laughs> So this is where I'm gonna start with my polishing. This is the coarse pad, it's the Roops wool pad, and that's combined with their rotary coarse. Roops has several different systems. Some are designed for the rotary buffer, some are designed for the orbital buffer, some are designed for DA. So I found it best to stick within their recommended line. I use the coarse pad and the coarse polish for rotary. It says correction of paint scratches and 1500 sanding marks. So with that roof being, should be in 3000 now, this should take it out fairly easily. It's almost shining now. I'll probably go over this somewhere where you can see it a little bit better later in the video. For now, I'm just gonna tell you the steps I'm doing. So this says it'll take out 1,500 marks. So I went through my steps and I finished it out in 3,000, so it should be no problem. But if I happen to miss a 1,500 scratch, this should take it out. That's my logic. We'll see if it works. taping this up I'm not trying to just cover the light I'm trying to cover the gap and catch that and catch the edge of the paint and cover that gap and that's going to keep all the compound from getting inside that crevice that crack right there so I won't have to try to get it out later run me a piece of tape over that I keep all the compound out of the jam. On these bedsides, I'm really just wanting to remove a little bit of orange peel, get rid of the overspray, and make it shine. We'll start with 1500 with a, a fairly stiff rubber block. And that should help me knock down the orange peel. Now 
Now this is fairly flat, so there's not much orange peel. It won't take a whole lot of sanding. You can dry it off as you go and see the progress. That way you can tell if you're sanding it flat enough or not. A softer pad and do this area. The other pad's too stiff, it's not making much contact. So I've got my 1500 done, which took out the majority of my orange peel. Now I'll go over everything with 2000. When I'm holding this paper, I usually take one of the corners and put it between my fingers. And then I try to concentrate on really my palm as much as possible to sand. You wanna sand across. See, I'm trying to use as much of the pad of my hand as possible. What you don't wanna do is bear down on your fingers, right? I'll use my fingers to get the paper then I put pressure really back on that area. Spread it out. You don't want to do straight lines. It's better to do a rounding motion. Keep it wet. Sometimes you'll hear like a piece of sand under it or grit, you know, you'll feel it or, or hear it. You got to rinse that off and get rid of it. If it's still there, rinse it off, wipe it off because it'll scratch the heck out of that paint when you're trying to sand. So we did 1500 wet by hand, 2000 wet by hand. Now I'm going to put 3000 on my DA and run over everything with 3000. Should start to bring the shine back with this. See a little bit of orange peel right there I want to sand out. Try to stay away from this edge. You don't want to sand on top of that edge if you can keep from it. That's where you end up going through. When you use this 3000, you want the surface damp. You don't want it soaking wet, but you want it damp. seeing the little suds it's wet enough if it's making bubbles like that it's sanding good <laughs> Things in 3000, it's time to break out the wool pad, start running that compound over, getting it shined back up. So see how quick it shined up? It's really, really gonna be easy to polish out with the steps we did. And when that buffer's going around in circles, you always wanna make it sure it's going off the edge. You don't wanna be cutting into the edge, that's gonna tear the paint. So when it's rotating, I'm standing it up and it's going off of this. 
Right here, there's not much of a choice. You just gotta lightly go over it. It will hang and, and tear the paint if you're not careful. But like this edge, I can stay off of that because the rotation of the buffer is going off every time. If I turn it this way, it's cutting into it. Don't wanna do that. Let's polish. That's my process. I try to start with 1500, nothing any coarser. If it was real bad orange peel, I might start with 12, but whatever scratch you put in, you gotta sand long enough to get that scratch out. So if you've got buffing compound and a wool pad that will take out 1500 grit, you start with 1500 grit and work your way up from there, should polish out. This clear polish is great. VC 5700 from PPG, their Vibrance line. It's really made for something like this that you're gonna maintain waxing it keep it clean that kind of thing polish is really good that was one pass on the polish i'm gonna take a second pass the same polish wool pad just to make sure that all the little scratches are out everything's looking good then i'll do an orbital polisher with a finer polish on it and that orbital will get rid of any swirl marks that i have but right now this is the main step that I, i'm worried about is getting to this point because now that it's smooth like i want it looking great i can put the moldings on get it built up and I'm still gonna do a final polish with the orbital to give it a final gloss and get rid of any remaining swirl marks or anything like that. So right now I'm just getting the heavyweight stuff out of the way, the orange peel, the trash, anything like that. Getting it smooth so we can put this thing together. If you look where I got this taped up, I went onto the paint. I didn't tape it up like I was gonna paint this thing. I taped it up like I wanna buff it, which is just to prevent me from hitting, the, from hitting the molding and keep the compound out of the crack. So I went over onto the paint, just a little bit. So I got this thing polished out really good. It's looking great. I'm gonna go ahead and run the orbital over it with a finer polish. And the only thing left to do would be like a final wax whenever the, the truck is done. I'm using their medium yellow pad along with the yellow tipped ceramic fine. You do the trick. Now this is a wool pad. They do have a foam pad. When I do the final polish, when it's done, I'm just cleaning things up. I'll use a foam pad. You can apply it to the pad. It only takes a few drops. Or you can put it directly on the vehicle. You notice I didn't sand below where the molding's going. There's really no need, it's really smooth. The little bit of texture that's there, the orange peel, it's not enough to worry about, I don't think. It's on white. If it bothers me, I'll polish it. Most likely I won't mess with below the molding line other than just polish it. No sand. Now, I didn't polish this until the compound was completely gone, right, with this step. Once I run over the whole bedside, then I'll go back with a microfiber towel and clean it up.
Well, we got a roof and a bedside done. Let's get busy. Got a little bit left to go. See y'all next time. Thanks for watching.